وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب My noble believing brothers and sisters in Al-Islam The first thing that I'm obliged to do Is to command myself and all of you with the greatest of all commands and is it not that this command to fear Allah Azza wa Jal, to be mindful of Allah, to revere Allah, to be conscious of Allah? And taqwa, as the ulama, they have numerous definitions, and from them is the definition of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. رحمه الله تعالى أن تجعل الوقاية بينك وبين عذاب الله تبارك وتعالى and that is to place between yourself and Allah a barrier preventing you from the punishment of the mighty and the majestic my noble believing brothers and sisters in Al-Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with a great matter. A matter if it is that we were to obey and we were to follow the guidance, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will be a tremendous path to the purification of our souls. And that is that Allah azza wa jal he has commanded us to call upon Him, to make dua, to supplicate to Him, Jalla Jalalu, the mighty and the magnificent. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ عَنْ إِبَادَتِي سَيَّدَ خُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ And indeed, your Lord Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he said, call upon me, for indeed I'm going to answer you. Indeed, the one that is prideful with regards to my worship is going to enter the lowest depth of the hellfire. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said in another verse, هُوَ الْحَيُّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ And He is the ever-living, the one that is deserving to be singled out alone in His worship. فَدِعُوهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Therefore it is upon you to call upon him, to make dua to him sincerely in the religion. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praises are for Allah, the Lord of Alameen, the Lord of Jinn and mankind. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala informed us concerning Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salam with regards to his gratitude when Allah Azza wa Jal answered his dua. And that is when he informed us, Alhamdulillahi alladhi wahaba li ala al-kibri Ismaila wa Ishaq inna rabbi sami'u dua All praises are for the one, Allah Azza wa Jal, who has granted me at all age my sons, Ismail and Ishaq. For indeed, my Lord Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He answers the dua. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He informed us, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ الدَّعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ And when my slaves, O Muhammad, ask you of me, then inform them that I am close. And surely I answer the dua of the one whenever he calls upon me. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala informed us in another verse, Udu'u Rabbakum tadarru an wa khufya innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen And call upon your Lord Tabaraka wa Ta'ala with honor and in secret. Indeed Allah Azza wa Jal, He does not like those who transgress. وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَادَ إِسْلَاحِهَا and do not create mischief upon the earth 
after it has been set right. وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَتَمَعًا إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Therefore call upon Allah Azza wa Jal with fear. Call upon Allah Azza wa Jal with fear and with great longing. Indeed, the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is close to the one who calls upon him. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. These are all tremendous verses, O noble ones. Where Allah Azza wa Jal, He informed us about this great act of worship by which we can purify our souls. And that is to supplicate and to call upon Him, the one in whose hands are all matters. The one, if it is that we submit to Him whenever we are in need of anything, then we will come to the realization that it is only in the hands of Allah. It is only in the hands of our Creator, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, blessed is He. So it is upon us with regards to our ubudiyah, our servitude, to understand the importance of calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal. The one who becomes shy as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, Concerning his slaves calling upon him. The one who gives and his wealth can never be decreased. The one who is the owner and possessor of all matters. Therefore it is upon all of us to understand that we are in need of calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal. We are in need of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to call upon Him. As we stated in these verses. Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to call. He wants us to beg of Him. Which being upon the face of the earth, O Abdullah, wa Ammat Allah, do you know likes to be asked for things? This is the tremendous sifa of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives. And Allah Azza wa Jal has given all of humanity whatever they ask for from the beginning of creation until the end of time. And it will not decrease in His Majesty the least. For there has come, O noble ones, the Hadith Qudsi, which is found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim under authority of the noble companion Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala an, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he said Ya ibadi lan tablughu darri fatadurruni wa lan tablughu naf'i O oh my slaves, never would you reach a state where it is that you're going to be able to cause me harm. And never would you reach a position where it is that you're going to bring some benefit to me. Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu ala atqa qalbi rajulin wahidin minkum ما نقص ذلك في ملك شيئا. O my slaves, O my servants, if it is that the first of you, and the last of you, and the jinn from amongst you, and the human from amongst you, were to come together, all of you, to be in the most pious heart from anyone from amongst you, this would not increase in my majesty the least. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues later on in the hadith Qudsi, Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum, qamu fi sa'idin wahidin, fasa'aluni fa'ataytu kulla insanin mas'alata, ma naqasa thalika mimma indi, 
كما ينقص المخية إذا أدخل البحر O oh my slaves if it is that the first of you and the last of you and the human from amongst you and the jinn from amongst you which will come into one place and all of you were to ask me for your needs and I was to give every single one of you what you wanted then know that this will not decrease what I have the least as if you were to put a needle into the ocean what comes out of it nothing this is the majesty of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala this is the treasure of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala this is what Allah azza wa jal possesses O slaves of Allah so who is it that is deserving of being called upon who is it that is deserving of being asked of when it is that each and every one of us is in need for there has come O noble ones the tremendous statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where it is that he said, "Laisa sayun akram alallahi min dua There is nothing that is more noble to Allah than the individual making dua. And we find the Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, when it is that he wrote to Abu al-Qasim al-Maghribi, he said, "Adua miftah kulli khair." That dua, O slaves of Allah, it is the key for everything that is good. Everything that is good, if it is that we want, we're going to call upon the one that possesses it. We're going to call upon the one that is going to release it to us. I want you to contemplate upon a tremendous statement of Amir al Mu'mineen, Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. Because when we make dua, the only thing that we give concern to is Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala answering that dua. But listen to the statement of Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. He said, Inni la ahmilu hammal ijaba. I do not see that the important matter is Allah Azza wa Jal answering the dua. Faida ulhimtu ad dua, fa inna al ijaba ma'a. He said, because if I gave importance to the dua, then surely Allah Azza wa Jal is going to answer it. So the important matter, the concern, is not that we give the focus to Allah answering our dua. But the concern is that we are sincere when we call upon Allah Azza wa Jal. That we are sincere in this act of worship. Knowing that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, if it is that we make our calling in accordance to the Sharia sincere and following the Sunnah of Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then Allah Azza wa Jal is going to answer that dua. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al Quran al Adim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum min al Bayan wa dhikr al Hakim aqulu hadha al Qawl. واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وشرو أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشرو أن محمدا عبده ورسوله O oh, noble ones, this is a tremendous act of worship. A noble act of worship. And it is upon us to understand what is inclusive, what is found in this tremendous act. And it is upon us to understand how we should call upon Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. When it is that an individual submits himself to calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal, then he's accepting that he's deficient. He's submitting to the one who has power and strength. He's lowering himself to the one that deserves being lowered for. He's acknowledging that he's deficient. And he's calling upon the one that is capable. 
So when it is that we make dua, it is upon us to understand how to supplicate. And the examples are numerous. Because the Prophet ﷺ constantly throughout his life called upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And we likewise constantly are commanded to call upon Allah Azza wa Jal for the dua of every believing individual is something that is wajib. And that can be found in Surah Al-Fatiha. In Surah Al-Fatiha, the second half all of it is dua. All of it is calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last salat aliman lam yaqra'a bi fatihatil kitab. And there is no salah for the one who does not recite the opening chapter of the Quran, which is Surah Al Fatiha, which means that it is incumbent. Yajibu alayna. It is fard that we call upon Allah Azza wa Jal. I want to close this khutbah with a tremendous supplication of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is upon every single one of us to memorize it. If it is that we are concerned with the purification of our souls and the rectification of our lives, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supplicated with this tremendous dua, a very short dua that is found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. And that is when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would supplicate, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha. O oh Allah, O oh my Lord, Submitting to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Give my soul piety. What is the soul in need of here based on this dua? Piety. Submitting to Allah Azza wa Jal. Who is making this dua? As Sadiq al Masduk. Aladhi la yantiku anil hawa. In huwa illa wahyu yuha. The one who does not speak of his desires. But rather, everything that he says, it is revelation. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. O Allah, give my soul its taqwa. Give my soul its taqwa. Wa zakkiha. Anta khayru man zakkaha. And purify it from every type of evil. Every type of nox deficiency purify it oh my lord because you indeed are the one who is best to purify it anta waliyuha wa maulaha you are the one who accompanies the heart and you are its owner O oh, slaves of allah Fi Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala. Fi Allah azza wa jal. Fear the day that we're going to stand before Him. And make your worship sincere for Him tabaraka wa ta'ala. Make your dua for Allah azza wa jal. Akhlisu dua'akum lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Make your dua sincerely for Him tabaraka wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّهُ مُجِيبُ الدَّعْوَاتِ For he is the one who answers the call of the caller. وَاكِيمُ الصَّلَةِ